Au, e, e mihi ana koutou. Um, ko waio, um, ko taranaki te maunga, ko pāti e te awa, ko waio tūri te marae, um, ko, ko aote e te waka, ko um, Rawari Walsh tōku ingoa. Um, ya, yeah, he uri o taranaki, um, taranaki pānui ku te upoko, as well as um, Ngāti Ruanui, Ngāti Raukawa, um, Ngā Rauru ki tai, te Ate Haunui a Paparangi, Ngā Tirangi. Um, very, very, very new to this Kiwi space and um, realised very quickly how devoid it was of Māori. For major exceptions, of course, um, the Wanaunga at the back there um, from Ngāti Mutunga, Ngāti Tama. Um, and uh, very, very quickly uh, thrown into the deep end, um, volunteered initially with Capital Kiwi um, before our um, Kati Maumahaki Wanaunga um, said, why is the only volunteer in the room the Māori guy? And, um, and the boss, who's uh, Atanga Tatiriti, was went, oh, 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 we're going to change that, you know, and the hop and a skip and I was on the payroll. But um, uh, the, the message that goes out is that Capital Kiwi wouldn't happen without the three po and using the, the, the tohu of the, of the Kiwi. So you've got the community, iwi and landowners. And so those three po are all very important and the Kiwi won't happen without them, but they don't have uh, shared mana. There is one that has, unfortunately, more mana over the rest, and that, that would be the landowners. But um, in terms of positivity, what it has created for, for our iwi um, is the reclamation of old practices and traditional practices such as tono. Um, no tono for wives, but tono for manu. Um, so the kui, kui at the front here is Poto Davies, um, Ngāti Kuroki Kahukura, and she um, laid down the wero to Wanaunga from Ngāti Ruanui, Tane Houston, that for, for Kiwi to return to Taranaki from Maunga Tauteri, there would have to be a tono. And so immediately for, for myself and Taranaki Whanui, when we wanted to um, receive manu from Maunga Tauteri, we knew immediately that we had to do a tono, and that was what we did. We sent an ope to Maunga Tauteri, and we laid down that tono, which fortunately was accepted, which then meant Ngāti Kuroki Kahukura, Ngāti Haua, Ngāti Raukawa um, travelled down with their manu to, to return um, Kiwi to the hills in behind Makara. Um, so you can observe there um, our rangatira Holden Hohaya um, wearing our kahu kiwi that came from Te Papa. And, um, and it was very special that morning because someone said, who's going to hold it? Who's going to hold it? And someone else, you know, one of the, the aunties at the back went, kaore, put it on. And Holden said, oh, you know, I shouldn't be wearing that. And it, it immediately was... No, like stop that, stop that talk, put it on, and um, it, it was very special and very moving. Through the tono, we've um, re-established, not re so waka wanangatanga has been, you know, created through that tono process and then the translocation. Um, the picture captured on the left is hands down my favourite, and. Um, it's really hard to put into words that moment. And this is when um, Poto and I went and released the first manu um, from Maunga Tauteri out onto the hills. And um, I'm shaking now thinking about it because it, it, it really was a moment. And uh, fortunately had um, the photographer there to capture that um, with both of us thanking each other, but, but really sharing a moment. Um, we have the Maunga Tauteri manager, um, Bodhi. Tihoi, and um, and again, this was this is what a day of celebration meant in terms of re returning our taonga. Um, I will quickly establish Capital Kiwi is very is quite different, sub somewhat to other Predator Free Twenty Fifty projects, is that it started off with an eradication of of mustelids being um, sorry not mustelids, we focus solely on stoats. So the Tafanganui Atara area is fortunate enough to have no ferrets. 
and that was one of the major reasons for uh, its viability in terms of us returning kiwi. We had no ferrets and we only had stoats. The Te Rawhiti Farm um, is a large station um, owned by a family trust and it's um, under lock and key so there aren't roaming dogs and there's no driving, um, there's no traffic. Um, we have the uh, Meridian wind farm out there so while it's rough and rugged country everything is accessible. We, trap, we say it's trapping for old men so when we talk about the bro racing and, and, and getting caught we don't have any of that. We're driving an LUV and we could do, be doing it wearing a suit and it makes the overheads much 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 lower and it means we can cover vast vast territories and it's boring. It's horrible trapping work. I want to be in the bush, I want to be in the Nairi, right? But it means that we get the job done at a much lower cost. Um, and so whilst we target stoats, we haven't managed to um, do eradication. We have got suppression down to below 5% of monitoring, which has enabled us a safe population to grow. So that is the whole kaupapa of, of Capital Kiwi, to grow a wild population. Um, very, very quickly and very early on, we spoke about, you know, no iwi, no kiwi. So this was a requirement from DOC in terms of the permit that they had, we, for us to receive kiwi from Ngāti Kuruki Kahukura and from Maunga Tauteri, we had to have iwi sign-off being in terms of, of, of the tono, which, which we were fortunate to get and receive and that meant that our permit was able to be progressed. But one of the things that has kind of come to light is, is what we have is we have um, DOC still being the final decision maker and the tunnel process running parallel to actual, actual decision making. So when the tunnel goes wrong or the iwi don't give sign off, then what we can get is we can get DOC saying this, this conservation thing isn't going to happen because iwi don't agree to it. When it does happen, all it is is another tick box exercise, which, sorry, it is not a tick box exercise. They view it as a tick box exercise, and then, then they still make the final decision. So one of the things that um, has, has come about and become apparent is our reliance on the permit and our reliance on DOC and, in terms of signing that off. And that's where we talk about our future in terms of what, you know, what our tunnel process has done is it has created that wakamanaungatanga and it's got us all speaking together. It's got us talking about our issues and, and what's going wrong. The example that I give now is, is Maunga Tauteri has done so well in terms of its kohanga kiwi. So for those that don't know, we had o &E, so Operation Nest Egg, where they went into the wild and they uplifted eggs from under male kiwi and they took them into a, um, an enclosure and they reared these kiwi by hand until they got to a certain weight and either put them back into the bush where there are stoats or they put them into a, um, a fenced enclosure. And so for so long that was the only thing to do in terms of um, rescuing our, our species going backwards. It's still going backwards in most areas around Aotearoa but within those sanctuaries the kiwi have done and proven resilient far better than we would ever have hoped. Maunga Tauteri now is posting numbers over, over 2,000 manu. So last year was the first year of translocation. 100 went to Tongariro and 50 went to um, Ponike. Next year, in terms of the, um, a healthy population, they need to move upward of 300 to 400 manu. Currently, we have a permit that is stalled in terms of going to Taranaki. And we have a permit in terms of Pornike that is locked in at 50 because someone decided, and so that's it. And so I'm trying not to be too pessimistic, but trying to um, show that this, this is our issue. And so what is going to happen is that we're going to actually have manu motihake over these manu in terms of us moving on and actually being decision makers and this tunnel not running in parallel. This is my last question, I promise everybody. Somebody make a note of it. 
Um, first of all, um, thank you so much for your presentation. It's incredible to see what's happening in the Kiwi space. This question's actually not for you, but it came out of your presentation, and this is for anybody in the room, actually. A trending theme that I've heard throughout these presentations is that iwi have often had this desire and they've put together these proposals to take back ownership and to restore their tanga species or their whenua, but haven't had the infrastructure to be able to absorb funding. For anyone in the room, what would that infrastructure need to look like so that iwi have autonomy over the decision-making process and are not reliant on Crown agencies to support them to absorb that funding? What would, that, what would need to happen? for that to be a reality for all of these projects that I've heard are reliant on either DOC or other um, Crown entities to support them to absorb the infrastructure in the systems. Um, again, I'm very new, as you know, so I wasn't involved in that. But one of the things that was really clear from the get-go was that these were manu returning to Taranaki that um, Ngāti Kuruki Kahukura made very clear that these kiwi had wakapapa to ngā iwi or Taranaki, uh, in particular the ones you know. And, um, and so they were very clear that this was something that needed to happen to be tika, but it, that it was going to get across the line as long as we followed tikanga with the tunnel process. Ki te whakaaro tātou, no ngā ki koroki kaukura āhau, kāre au i mahi tērā mama mahi, ngare ka mōhio me tono atu me tono mai. Ko rā te, te, te ngako o te koha, o te utu, me nā ka tukene e koe te koha, te, te kiwi ki reira, he utu kei runga i ngā ti koroki kaukura. Mm. No reire kia whakautu i tērā taonga, ka whakautua. Yeah. So it, it's, it's that reciprocity that we hear about, the positive side of utu. Mm. Oh, and that's exactly the issue that um, Ngāti Kuruki Kahukura are facing at the moment, is they've received a tono from um, Taranaki Maunga and the Taranaki Maunga project, and they aren't able to proceed from now because of the hurdles and, and the lack of the permit um, sign-off. So yep. it's actually, in, it's actually in inhibiting their ability to, to do so. Um, there's a question here from from online that says, so without those permits, those kiwis, ki those kiwi can't move and therefore likely to die from overpopulation. I, um, I remember a, a corridor from um, uh, Monday's Wana, the, the seed Wana, those of you that, that heard that, was about the presumption under the Wildlife Act that wildlife was owned by the Crown. Another another term that gets used often is the balance, and you know that the, the population will plateau, and that that plateau does not mean ho order. That plateau means ticks, fleas, and manu dying, and um, and that's one of the <coughs> things. Do we, you know, this this um, island that we've created is not a natural island. You know, we're, we're the ones who built the fence and forced them to stay within this boundary. So we're the ones that are forcing them to overpopulate an area. Mm. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Um, do you foresee a time when they could be sustainably harvested? Um, so this, <laughs> so this, this exactly what's happened is this lack of um, translocation has actually sped up the idea of, of customary harvest. But this is a room full of people who are all on board with that. The country is, my whakaaro is that the country is not on board. And the, but at the end of the day, the entire population of, of North Island brown kiwi is, is not ready. You know, we, for Maunga Tauteri, for Rotokare, but these are, these are islands that we've created and we still want to grow the, the entire population to be at a, at a point when we can lift that ahui. But this, that is the end goal, of course. I'm sure two we have a view about sustainable harvest of kiwi, mm. but we won't go there. <laughs> Kia ora. Is there another question? Um, I just wanted to talk to your kōrero before. Uh, we got, at Ngāti Sama, we got a little bit of land 
returned to us, and the treaty settlement was a 1,600 hectare block called Paranin. Here's a podocarp forest bound us onto the sea, and it's, I think it's a beautiful place. But <laughs> anyway, we, um, we formed a, a trust uh, to, to Tiaki Itawa Whenua um, so that we could manage it and form our own infrastructure around that, and we wanted it to be separate from the Runanga. So we formed our own trust. We call it Tiaki Timodo Parininihi, and um, within our own trust, we 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 can form our trust from whoever, but it's but it, it has to have majority Ngati Tama trustees on the trust, and from that we managed to form our own infrastructure throughout the whole the whole network. I think we had ended up with two and a half thousand traps and. And we could employ. We employed three people, but we did. We went through all of our own funding, and it was completely independent from Department of Conservation or the Regional Council or anybody. They did support us if we made a tunnel to them, but it was completely under under the control of of our own trust. Oh, tēnā rā koe rā ore, um, kia ora mō tō kōrero, kia mātou, ko nei kai aung tō kūringoa, he uri a hau o nga te rāroa, me te ateaua ki te tau i hu, me nga te kōro ki ka hukura hoki. Um, my pātai is, um, just, I just wondered what, what was the, how did you get to the, de the decision to choose to have kiwi, as kaitiaki, as whānau, as hapu? Was that a sort of a, was that driven by the community or was it driven by your Fano? I know back home we're having discussions as to whether we're ready as an iwi to be able to take on um, Taonga like Tuatara to be able to you know carry out the the, ca the work that that comes with that. So just a question around you know how did you make that decision, Kilda? No, no, me kia koe, um, he, he, he pai pātai. Um, so this. Um, Kiwi were chosen by our, our founder who was work, doing a lot of work in Waimapi, which is in Taro, right in the centre of, of, of Wellington, and he was seeing the halo effect that was coming out of Zealandia and seeing that the fence still held in the Kiwi puku puku, and so, there was, and so he just posted the question of like, why can't we have Kiwi? And one of the things for those that don't work in Kiwi conservation is they're actually really tough. Like they're really strong manu. They want to. They want to kick you. They don't want to be held. They, you know, and they can live in pine forest. They can live in on desert road. You know, they can live in in Nairi. They can live on the coast. They they eat kota out of out of our out of our manga. You know, like they are they are tough, resilient animals that are just in danger from stoats and 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 predation. And so kiwi were actually the low hanging fruit in terms of conservation. And, but the difference was, the difference was the scale, you know. So if, if and and Wellington afforded that peninsula, and again with the no ferrets, it afforded that opportunity to grow a large kiwi population, um, with areas that were easy to trap. So that is why uh, is why kiwi were chosen. Mm. Kapai, tina no homai te paki paki te